Hi and welcome to today's video. In this one, I will be explaining to you about the letter T. The small letter T has got a variety of factors and different kinds of information trying to be expressed in one letter formation. It is a bit complicated but I'll try to make the explanation and the observational points a bit simpler for you to understand. Let's change perspective and have a closer look at what the letter T represents on the piece of paper and how our mindset is revealed through this formation. The letter T that we are going to study today has got two formations in one structure. The first formation is the stem and the second one is the crossbar. The stem is the vertical line and the crossbar is the horizontal line. This formation together makes the letter T. In this video, we have many factors to study and please take care while understanding each of these topics separately. When you're practicing handwriting analysis, I would suggest you to be careful while analyzing the letter T because there are many factors that we need to consider and if these factors are confused, then the analysis could go wrong. So the first factor is going to be the height of the stem compared to the letter H then the vertical position of the crossbar, then the horizontal position of the crossbar. Later on, I will add a few more tips about letter T and how you can get more information about this letter formation. So let's understand the first aspect. The first aspect is where the height of the stem is shorter than the letter H. Now, why are we comparing the letter H more than any other letter. Yes, we can compare the height of the stem in the letter T with the letter D, the letter H, the letter F, K, L. But in the English alphabet, it's very difficult to find T and D, T and K together or very close to each other. Since it's easier to find the letter H next to letter T, therefore we take it as a benchmark or a standard upon which we can compare the height of the letter T. In the video previously, I had explained to you about the letter H and letter H is about knowledge and ideas that are going to be expressed to others. So this shows that if you have some knowledge or you want to express something, are you going to be more humble and uh, more certain about what you say? Or is there going to be a bit of pride and a bit of competitiveness in the way you express? So the shorter the stem, shorter compared to the letter H, then the person's ego is a bit reduced and they are able to express their ideas and knowledge much better. Whereas this person can be more competitive and slightly flamboyant about what they know. Yes, it may show that they are proud about what they know and at times, it looks like they are egoistic, but it's just about being competitive. The problem is that if these people, the person who's writing the T cross T stem, higher than the height of the letter H, then their competitiveness, even when not required, then looks egoistic. Like in, in a normal com conversation, if these people are just having normal chit chat, and they want to ascertain their point of view or they want to make sure that their point of view is given more credibility, then they will try to enforce this. Whereas this person, even if he knows much better knowledge than the other person in the conversation, he won't push his knowledge too much and he will have a more of a listening ear. And yes, if he has to make a point, it won't look egoistic. So if you are in a situation where you are learning or you are a student, you're trying to do something new, this combination where the T is shorter than the letter H will be more advantageous for you. If you're in a competition or you're going to do a debate or maybe even if you're a lawyer, this could be a slightly better advantage for you because you have to make your point a bit more stern and a bit more uh, stronger. But if you are in a student scenario or a learning situation this could prove like a disadvantage and normally these people are not good listeners so just take care of the height of the letter t and use it to your advantage based on the situation 
Now the one rare example is where the t height and the h height is almost same. This is a rare occurrence and if it happens often in your handwriting, it shows that you've got some sort of a balance between the learning capabilities of the shorter t and the competitiveness of the taller. Now remember, if you want both of these and you're trying to make the t height same as the letter h, it will drive you crazy to get the height exactly same and in the effort to be perfect, you will lose your mind. So I would suggest you to just be natural, let the T be as it is and if you feel that you want to change it, yes, you can practice it for some time and it would have an effect. Now the next one, next aspect that we need to go through after understanding this is the next vertical position of the crossbar. When the crossbar is in the middle zone, like the lower part of this letter H, it's in the middle part of the handwriting formation. This is the lower zone, middle zone and the upper zone. So we are talking about the middle zone. If the crossbar is in the middle zone, that means that the person's goal setting is about more of present tense activities. Their goals are mostly for survival and they don't have a much higher, not quality, but uh, let's say visionary type of a goal. Crossbar represents goal or goal setting. So if the person is just starting off a job and he just wants to make sure he gets food on the plate and he just wants to survive, this crossbar normally comes up in the handwriting where it's quite low, it helps the person survive. This can also come sometimes in the teacher who's teaching kindergarten students or the first or second grade because that kind of knowledge is quite low compared to the teacher's experience of life. Now she may have learnt grammar or simple arith arithmetic plus and minus when she was 5 years old and now when she is 30 she's trying to teach the same thing again. So she may have a lot of knowledge, but she has to lower her explanation vibration or the way she explains so that the children will learn the basics of language or mathematics. So if you are a kindergarten teacher or a primary school teacher teaching basic knowledge, this crossbar actually could be an advantage. Of course, then it's not going to make a huge difference for your life because then even the goals that you set are going to be much more simpler. It will be more about what you're going to eat today, how, what you're going to wear, what you're going to dress up today. Not much of a futuristic planning. Now once the crossbar goes into the upper zone and it starts to climb, that's where the person's goal setting becomes more futuristic, a bit more visionary kind of a thing. Of course, if you go too high, the further away we go from the middle zone, the practicality of the goal reduces. So we could say that the, let the crossbar at the position 2 is most ideal where it's just near the middle zone. So it has got a higher reality check and of course it has got the visionary aspect. Now when we go to letter, the, sorry, the position 3, the visionary or the futuristic nature of the goal is quite high and the practicality of it may be slightly lower. Now when we come to the level 4 where it's almost not touching the stem of the letter T and it's going much higher than the middle zone, this is where the person's goal is starting to look more unrealistic. The level 4 and 5 is where we have the goal setting of a person that is too good to be true or much larger than what he can really handle. So in a handwriting sample, if you see a crossbar somewhere in the middle zone of the letter T, then it shows that the person wants to have a goal setting or a lifestyle that is mostly basic in nature, simple to do, simple to achieve, like a homemaker who just wants to know what food to cook today or where to go out or what to do at home and just basic activities. Once the person's crossbar goes slightly above the middle zone but in the upper zone, 
that is whether person's planning is realistic and also f- having a flavor or a nature of being futuristic as the crossbar climbs higher and higher it goes away from the middle zone the practicality reduces the fi- the difficulty increases but yes it does look a bit more fancy if the crossbar goes way above the stem of the letter t then we know that the practical application or the viability of the goal setting is going to reduce substantially so now we understood the vertical positioning of the crossbar now let's understand the horizontal positioning if the crossbar is right in the center like the second line over here we'll just number them as 1 2 and 3 so the crossbar at the l- number 2 is right in the center this is where the person is able to t- time his goal and actually match his ego to the goal setting that means that his timing and almost you could say punctuality of his goal and actions that require the goal to be completed are matching very well now if you go to the formation 3 the formation 3 shows that the crossbar is more towards the left and less towards the right this shows that the goal setting has more of a past related nature or it has got something to do with the past it is still going to be achieved but it will take some time whereas the first formation the number 1 formation is about the future this is where the person's current goal has got a flavor or a nature of being more futuristic it can be achieved but it will take some time because it's not very well balanced so 1 and 3 the person is distracted with the past or the future aspects of the goal rather than focusing on it right now will this make the result or the success of the goal less it's not really certain but at least it is touching the stem since the crossbar is touching the stem yes the success rate is high now sometimes the person rides the crossbar away from the stem this is where the person is so stuck in the past or the future that his goal is not at all touching the current scenario it's kind of like wanting to book a movie ticket and the seats are full this person is trying to book tickets for a movie and he knows it's house full but he's still trying to be hopeful the chances of the goal meeting the present tense is very less these people are stuck with future thoughts and are not able to focus on the present tense these people over here are stuck with the past memories or regrets or some sort of a past related thought and it's not allowing them to perform today both these people can be distracted based on time related thoughts rather than the nature of the goal itself if the nature of the goal is high or low it won't matter because now since it's not even touching the stem the practicality of it and the success level of it goes down quite a lot these people want to be punctual but it is very difficult to actually keep up the punctuality so now we have studied some of the factors of letter t and some qu- questions may come up in your mind about the different formations so just t- tag them below in the comments and let me know what your questions are i'll just teach you one more small aspect of the letter t and it's more related to the stem some people write it t like a cross and some people write it t like a bent structure or like a umbrella handle what's the difference between a person writing a t with a straight stem without a curve and a stem with a curve at the end now remember we are not talking about the height or the crossbar or anything else we're just talking about this curvature some people include this curvature in their letter t and some people don't the people who write the t like as if it's a cross and they leave it blunt these people want to talk to the point 
they tend to be very focused and they don't want to use any flowery language or any fancy words to get their point across they just want to be direct and to the point they look like they are rude or some people may find them a bit harsh but it's just that they are more particular about what they're talking now it doesn't mean that these people are being flowery or they are being uh, too flamboyant but it's just about them being a bit more polite both these people want to put their point across and they can be direct but this person puts it in a slightly softer tone the mannerisms of this person is slightly better but this person may fi- you may find his language skills a bit crude kind of like a person who's just learning a language and he's he knows the grammar but he's just using simpler sentences whereas this person is making the effort of using a bit more adjectives a bit of more um, manners and just making a bit pleasant conversation so whenever you see the handwriting sample and it has this sort of a letter t structure which has got a sharp end or a vertical end that's where the person is going to prefer to the point conversations and not very long but uh, let's say practical conversation whereas this person can also have it but he doesn't mind having it a bit more polite and more courteous a bit more gentle way of expressing the knowledge so we've understood about the letter t now let's change perspective and summarize what we've learned today all right so we've just learned about some of the aspects of letter t structure and there are so many formations for you to analyze i would highly caution you to take each of the aspects of this letter t separately analyze them separately and when you're good at it combine them to form a brand new analysis this letter t has got a lot of information so take your time with this one of the techniques that i use while analyzing a handwriting is i take some time before i say any sentence let's say i see a certain formation of letter t and immediately my mind tells me a certain point i wait for at least 5 to 10 seconds so that the sentence which i say should be very well formed and very accurate at times what happens is that we think about something in our mind and because of the rush of excitement and to express we may say it in the wrong way and a wrong analysis could at times affect a person throughout their life so be very careful and take responsibility of what you say and take your time with annotating analysis if you see somebody's crossbar too high or you see somebody's height of the letter t going too high it's a bit tempting for you to say something negative but just keep it as polite as possible and uh, yes you have to say the truth but you have to keep it a bit mild be a bit more cultured and be uh, concerned be considerate about the person when you are analyzing the handwritings because what you are seeing probably nobody knows about them even their own family members may not know certain aspects about them the handwriting reveals a lot so have respect for the information that is revealed through the handwriting and whenever you are analyzing this letter formation just take your time compare this formation with the letter h because it's most commonly found as t and h structure are normally side by side all right so if you like this video click the like button and if you would like to see some more and uh, get the free updates just subscribe to the channel thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one take care